Mammoths and sabre-toothed animals once roamed this area of southern England. Man has been here since prehistory and the land farmed by Romans and the Anglo-Saxons. Doomsday Book mentions Greys, a village named after the Norman Henry de Grey, who became Lord of the Manor after the defeat of King Harold in 1066. And today I'm in West Thurrock, a few miles from the town of Greys in the county of Essex. This heavily industrialised area is on the north bank of the River Thames, 20 miles east of the City of London. I'm standing outside the gates to a Grade 1 listed building. This is the church dedicated to St Clement. The church has existed on this site since before the invasion of 1066. Early in the 1100s, this church had a circular tower. In the early 1200s, the church was widened by the addition of aisles to the north and the south sides. Over time, various repairs and alterations were made to the fabric of the building, and a square tower replaced the round tower in the late 1400s. More repairs were carried out in the 17th and 18th centuries, and by the start of the 20th century, reconstruction of various walls and the roof were undertaken. Some subsidence occurred in the 1930s and iron tyres were fitted to strengthen the walls. In the 1960s I was confirmed in this church by the Bishop of Bradwell. But in 1977 regular church services were stopped due to the cold and damp conditions during the winter. Today the church is looked after by the factory that I know as Headley's but I believe is now called Proctor and Gamble. There are two brasses in the church set into the chancel floor. They are both for members of the Hayes family who held the advowson of the church in the 1500s. The first brass is to Humphrey Hayes and his son, also a Humphrey, who died within four months of each other. One on the 10th of October 1584 and the other on the 22nd of January 1585. The second brass is to Catherine Redding, the daughter of Humphrey Hayes, who died aged 24 on the 16th of December 1591. The advowson of the church then passed to her husband, Thomas Redding. These steps going down to the north door show just how much the church has sunk into the ground over the years. In the years gone by, pilgrims on their way to Canterbury came here to ford the river, which at that time used to be fordable at low tide. An Italian seal has been found in the village of North Stifford, which could indicate that pilgrims going further than Canterbury, even as far as Rome, were passing through St Clement's on their way to the Channel ports. In the churchyard stands a memorial to the 16 boys and the officer in charge of the sailing cutter Alert, which was in collision with the steam tug Empress. The cutter was from His Majesty's training ship Cornwall, which was moored in the river off of Purfleet. The Cornwall was originally named Wellesley. In 1868, the Admiralty loaned her to the London School Ship Society who refitted her as a training ship. She was renamed Cornwall and was moored off of Purfley in April 1868. And now to finish, I must mention this lattice tower that is the tallest in the United Kingdom and I'm told that it's over 200 metres high. It carries an overhead power line at 380 kilovolts across the River Thames here in West Thurrock, in Essex. Cheerio! You know I think